is a unique figure who stands tall among NFL head coaches. Mom's a pro. He's really the first coach that's uh, been around that really treats players like men. He understands how practice is, and if you get tired, he'll, he'll take an afternoon off just to let you uh, uh, rest up and, and get ready. And uh, I think the players respond to that. They respond by playing as hard as they can for him. He treats everybody as individuals and as people, and these guys around here really appreciate that. He's just really laid back and lets you have your own rope to hang yourself or whatever, but everybody just goes out and works hard for him and, and gets the job done. Of course, I appreciate the compliment. I also appreciate finding out those young men know what to say at the proper time. But I've always felt like the head coaches get way too much credit. The compliments they were talking about really go to the system football coaches because they're the backbone of any football organization. Ten men are a whole lot more important than one. This modest coach is known for giving players a fair shake and for being a great communicator. That's why some folks on the bayou think Bum is heaven sent. Perhaps divine inspiration led him to bring quarterback Richard Todd to town, and it didn't take long for fans to convert to followers of this new saint. There were quite lofty expectations for the seasoned veteran, and despite a rocky start, Todd showed his determination to reach for the sky. flashes of brilliance in a season when the offense often sputtered. But by season's end, Dave Wilson went from sub to starter and kicked the offense into overdrive, engineering seven touchdowns in three games and putting the quarterback situation up for grabs in 85. Todd and Guido Merkins. The quarterback position was well stocked, but the offensive line was in desperate need of a little patchwork. Injuries ravaged the unit which featured Brad Edelman, Kelvin Clark, Steve Cork, Louis Oubre, Dave Lafari, Stan Brock, Chris Ward, and Joel Hilgenberg. 42 of 80 possible starts were lost due to injury. Despite the revolving door in the trenches, this group still cleared the way for a potent rushing attack, a tribute to the adaptability of the linemen as much as the talent of the running backs. With the trade of George Rogers to the Washington Redskins, number 35, Earl Campbell, acquired in mid-84, will be expected to shoulder most of the load next season. Campbell will add power and punch to a ground game which features versatile Wayne Wilson, number 30. can bulldoze up, over, and through blockers, no two Saints unleashed more devastation on their opponents than Pro Bowl selections Ricky Jackson and Bruce Clark. To this terrifying tandem, blockers became minor annoyances to be swept aside. Little could restrict these pocket busters from the relentless pursuit of their prey. For the second straight year, Jackson's 12 sacks led all NFC linebackers. Clark was right behind him, tallying 10 and a half. This 
was the most dominant season of Bruce Sparks' three-year career, and he was honored as the team's most valuable player on defense. Quarterbacks floundered and fell to these princes of pressure, who anchored the second-best defense in the conference. During his reign in 1984, Ricky Jackson led the Saints in tackles and could overcome any hurdle to get his man. I think Ricky's uh, been an excellent uh, in the position that he's playing. I, I think the, the toughest position to play in the 34 is that strong side backer. He's been very effective in his blitzes, and uh, with New Orleans, he's got to be very involved because they do a lot of blitzing, and he's been probably their biggest asset there. By combining competitive fire with extraordinary ability, Ricky Jackson has become one of football's premier linebackers. 